Before Dr. Introna leaves for Turkey, he sends St. Nicholas's skeletal data to Dr. Caroline Wilkinson at the University of Manchester. She is one of the world's leading experts in facial reconstruction and has the key role of revealing what St. Nicholas actually looked like. Caroline is immediately struck by Nicholas's stature. At just under five foot six, he was below average height even for his time. But it is his skull that is most intriguing. This image of the skull shows this quite rounded brachycephalic shape to the skull. The first thing I notice really is that it's actually quite a big, robust male skull. So in relation to the stature, this is a, a surprise since he was very small. It's a very large skull. Caroline will reconstruct St. Nicholas's face from the data she has received from Dr. Introna. He hopes her work will help him to separate the real man from the legendary image and uncover the true story of St. Nicholas. Okay, uh, sit down. Uh, are you all set to look at this important case? What we have is, uh, is uh, a few fragments belonging to uh, St. Nicholas. We have here five pieces, as you can see. And uh, uh, this is obviously a distal. Oh, here, go ahead and tell me what you see. This guy had problem to the wrist. It's an old fracture that uh, turned a little bit uh, the axial of the bones. Uh, uh, how long ago this may have occurred before that? Oh, we have uh, plenty of time to make uh, a complete uh, callus, bone callus. Yeah, so and it's almost could completed. Be, yes, and uh, I think it's uh, surely more than five, seven, ten years ago. Okay. Okay. And uh, I looked at the, uh, the uh, sex and... Dr. Isjan shows Franco the jawbone. This is uh, uh, the right, right mandible. Yes. Uh, the corpus. Yes. Will it match the data from the skull in Bari? And uh, we have a root. Yes. Oh, it's the canine yes. one, two, three. Anyway, this is not a very, very thick. This, yeah. with this part of Franco thinks the jawbone belonged to a small skull. A lot of uh, thickness for the muscle okay. insertion. Yes, 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 for the mastoid and, and, and the temporal muscles. Anyway, this is very interesting. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so what do you think about this? You know, what, what, uh... As you know, the bones of San Nicolas in Bari have studied just once in the, the 1953, and this is uh, the skull. Ah, interesting. And this is the only part that we miss in the skull. That's the left side? This is the left side. Okay. And the right side we have. For this reason, I don't know if you agree, but uh, these bones, these could, are could be not related with the, the bones that we have in Bari. It does look like that, but yes, these bones... Uh, uh, the jawbone in Turkey is from the wrong side, so it cannot belong to the skull in Bari. The pieces that are here... We have in Bari. ...are also uh, in there too. And uh, so there is uh, obviously a, a problem, although... Dr. Isjan is distressed by the state the Bari bones are in. But, uh, you know, a skeleton of this nature, you know, it has not been taken care of as the bones of St. Nicholas. I yeah, mean, but such an important person. And uh, personally, I, I'm rather uh, surprised and disappointed to see the bones uh, in such a uh, miserable situation. Although disappointed by the outcome of the examination of the Turkish bones, Dr. Isjan is now more concerned for the future of the bones in Bari. While Franco has been examining the Turkish bones, Caroline Wilkinson in Manchester is using the latest forensic software to transform the images and data of St. Nicholas's skull into a 3D virtual head. 
the phantom pen allows them to actually feel the skull as if it were real. What we're doing here is trying to create a 3D representation of the skull from the 2D information. We've got some sketches that were done when measurements were taken from the skull and Chris has used that as a template to build the 3D model of the skull which we can then hone down using the x-rays and the photographs to get it to be a more accurate 3D model. Caroline examines the virtual skull. Okay, let's have a look at the nose then. She makes a surprising discovery. That's quite marked, isn't it? That The bend on this side pushing inwards and the opposite on his right pushing out. Let's have a look at it again from the front. So that's going to be very noticeable in the, in the soft tissue. It's quite badly broken, isn't it? Mm. And they've both been, it looks like he's been hit from this side and or received a blow from this side that's sent both bones in that direction. Mm -hmm. I think breaking his nose would probably have altered the level of symmetry to his face because it, now his nose is quite asymmetrical. It's consistent with one blow, but it, we don't know that for a fact. It could have been broken a number of times. In Manchester, Caroline Wilkinson is completing the second stage of her facial reconstruction of St. Nicholas. When all the muscles are in place on the skull, you should really be able to see what this individual is going to look like. But all of our research suggests that you should be able to build a likeness of an individual that somebody who knew them should be able to recognise. To reconstruct the face of St. Nicholas, all the facial muscles must be added to the skull. The process requires a specialist knowledge of all facial tissues and takes hours of precision work. Of particular interest to Caroline is the reconstruction of Nicholas's broken nose. The asymmetry has been caused by him breaking his nose at some point in his life. We can work out the projection of the nose by looking at the tangents of the last part of the bone at the top of the nose with what's called the nasal spine at the base of the nose and where those two tangents meet will give you the projection of the nose. So the whole of the bridge of his nose has been pushed over to his right hand side. Caroline's next step will be the addition of skin and hair which will finally reveal Nicholas's true likeness. But why would a saint have a broken nose? St. Nicholas has been portrayed in icons for 1,700 years. Until now, no one has known what he really looked like. Well, this is the finished image. I, um, I am a little bit surprised but I know perfectly that the images of St. Nicholas that we see on icons, that we see on books, uh, is uh, an image from fantasy. Mm -hmm. This is an image that came from uh, a scientific study of a skull. You have done really a fantastic job. Thank you. This model fits to all the measurements that uh, were taken in 1956. This is the first time that we had the opportunity to see the facial reconstruction of San Nicolas. Thanks. Ducini is very, is very prominent. He's a beautiful. Yeah, he's image. got a very square jawline. Yes, and he's beautiful and Very masculine face overall, I think. Strong muscles on the, on the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. I like this uh, this image. It's uh, very realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, you live uh, all your life uh, with uh, in a different image in your mind of St. Nicholas, that is of course uh, in, uh, an image of a fantastic image, mm -hmm. then to see the real face, uh, it's a little bit shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but the shade of, for the fracture of the nose is fantastic. 
Do you like yes, it? Yes, I like very much. Good. It was very interesting to do that actually, to, to do the reconstruction of the nose because of the distortion.